Hi there, Steve here. Uh, it's been a while since I made a video. Uh, I am very happy that uh, Alex at, uh, at our Link headquarters there was able to get my iMovie to work again. He fixed some settings. I'm just as happy as can be. Uh, thank you for all those people who said, uh, when are you going to do another video, blah, blah, blah. Well, here I am. So today I'm just going to ramble a bit. Uh, I had a lovely uh, two months in Europe uh, traveling. It was my 65th birthday. My wife and I traveled. We were in Germany, uh, Portugal, Spain, briefly in France, and mostly in Italy. Uh, and it's lovely to travel in a country where you speak the language. Uh, I don't know how people enjoy traveling in countries for any length of time where they don't speak the language. I particularly wanted to spend a lot of time in Italy to try and raise the level of my Italian. And I had an interesting experience there because I really didn't have a chance to speak a lot of Italian while there because I was with my wife and we were driving and visiting all the sites and we'd be we'd go out to dinner together at night and mostly we were with each other. So and a lot of the people in the hotels and restaurants spoke English. I was quite surprised. And they were quite intent on speaking English. So but I still managed to speak a certain amount of Italian. But what I noticed was that because I was listening to Italian in the car, I had our, our link lessons on that I was listening to. And um, I would read the newspaper every day over coffee. And there would always be a little bit of Italian. And then some, some days I'd be lucky in that I would meet people, uh, Italians that I would have to speak to and, and so forth. But what I found was when I came home, my Italian was much improved. Uh, before leaving, I had listened to uh, an audiobook from Il Narratore, and I recommend ilnarratore.com as the place to get your Italian audiobooks. And uh, there was a, and a particular Italian book, La Provinciale by Alberto Moravia, which I had listened to before leaving, and there were many parts in it that I had trouble understanding. When I came home, I listened to it, I understood 99% of it. Uh, and, and what I ascribe that to is that I was in a situation for a month where Italian was real. It wasn't just, you know, listening to stuff while jogging in Vancouver. I was in the environment. I was communicating. It was on a day-to-day -day basis, the Italian was real. Mostly, I was just listening and reading, uh, occasionally speaking. And I, I believe that does something. That does, I, I, I want to read more about how our emotions uh, affect and our feelings affect our ability to learn. But I, I just think it made Italian more real. It made it more natural. It wasn't something I was studying. It was something that I was doing. And so when I came home, uh, I found that I had uh, stepped up my Italian uh, by quite a bit. So that was one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, another thing I want to mention is, uh, you know, every time we have a new tutor at Link, I like to sign up for a discussion. Uh, and so we had a new tutor. Uh, yeah, I won't mention which language. Two new tutors in this one language, so I signed up with both of them. And I explained our system, which is, uh, you know, just uh, write down all the words and phrases that I misuse uh, and then send them to me in our report. I save it uh, and then I save, I, I import it into Link and I save the words and phrases that I need. And I, I still remember what I said in our discussion. And so I see, aha, that was wrong. And then I save it and it'll show up highlighted in yellow and when I read again and so gradually I'll get used to that word or that phrase. Uh, one of the tutors did that. The other one wrote me a lot of, uh, you know, explanations in English of what I did wrong. And I, I must say my reaction to that was, well, first of all, having the English on the text is, is not convenient because then I can't import it into Link because it, it messes up our statistics. But the other thing is she was too much of a teacher and maybe it's just me. But uh, if I look at the mistakes that are corrected, I would say they fall into different categories. Uh, sometimes they're just careless mistakes. It's something that I may get correct 80% of the time and wrong 20% of the time. So I don't need a lengthy explanation. It's sufficient to see it the correct way and I'll remember, oh yeah, right, that's how I'm supposed to, supposed to say that. Uh, some things maybe I don't want to do well, let's face it, this language was, was Portuguese. So one of the issues was in Spanish we say preguntar and in Portuguese we say perguntar. I know that, but I'll occasionally get it wrong while I'm speaking because I'll confuse my Italian with, or at least, yeah, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese. Uh, 
So I don't need the explanation. It's sufficient just to say, later on I read, oh, I said this. Yeah, that reminds me, I've got to try harder to remember to say per guntar when I'm speaking quickly. But it doesn't affect communication. It's really not a big deal. If I were to spend, if I'm in Portugal for, or Brazil for two or three weeks, it'll all be per guntar. But having just come from uh, visiting in Spain and so forth, it's whatever. But I don't need the explanation. Another one was that the R, she said, you have to pronounce it like as if I'm scratching my throat, which is how they pronounce it in Brazil and in certain parts of Portugal. But maybe I don't want to make that sound. So it raises the other issue is what are the goals? Uh, and then I used uh, some of the pronouns wrong, you know, or meu, whatever. And she said, you should go back and study your pronouns. Well, maybe I don't want to study the pronouns. In other words, with too much teaching, I find the teacher takes the initiative away from the student. Maybe I don't want to speak. Maybe I just spoke. Occasionally I want to speak. But maybe, maybe my main interest is just to understand. Uh, maybe I don't want to pronounce with an R that scratches my throat. Uh, it's my language. In, in other words, I learn it the way I want to learn it. Now, that's, of course, a bit idealistic because in school you have to pass tests and it's the teacher who determines uh, what your standard is going to be, what you're going to learn, how you're going to pronounce. And so really the teacher ends up taking away the pleasure, that pleasure of independent study that I have when I'm learning a language. So that's why, I mean, there are, there are other reasons. I also think that, that the corrections don't help. You know, go and study your pronouns. Well, I've looked at them. I've seen those tables. Uh, it's only slowly that it's eventually going to become natural to me. So if I want to go look at the tables, I know where they are. I'll go look at them. Uh, it's sufficient to simply, uh, the way we do it at Link, is just write out all the phrases that I got wrong. I'll look at them. Here are all the phrases that you got wrong, and here's how you're supposed to say them. I see that only in the target language. I import, I say. Away I go. I don't need a lot of explanations. Some explanations are confusing. Many of them are unnecessary. Plus, what always has this, this impression that, you know, whenever the teacher is active teaching, like I know something that you don't know, I will teach it to you, that to me is less motivating than I am discovering the language. I am on this exploration. Speaking of which, I'm now into Korean because I said way back in September that I would do Korean and this was a Korean challenge and we've got Korean at Link and I'm going to see how much I can learn by Christmas time. But in reality, we got so little content put up at Link. We have more now. But in those days, it was so slow to come. Plus, then I was traveling, so I really did nothing. But now I've decided to go at it again, and I'm really enjoying it. And what I should have actually brought an example, but it is so great doing it on the iPad. Because basically what I have now is I go and do the lessons in Link. I, I click on all the words that I need. But then I, and I, uh, but then I only read and, and listen on my iPad sitting comfortably uh, in, in a sofa. And since I've already gone through these texts and pick out all the word, picked out all the words that I need that I don't understand, and these now highlight in yellow when I read and listen on my iPad. So I listen to the text. I read the text on my iPad. I've, gone, I've been through like this, this one series, 26 episodes of this silly story. Uh, I've gone through it five or six times. There's still parts that I just don't get. Uh, I can look up the words again. Oh, yeah, right. And I'm going to go through it 15, 20 times. But at the end of it, I'll have a better sense of structure in, in Korean. But it's just me and the language. No explanations, no examples, no nothing. It's just this text, the sound, the words, and me. And I'm just, there's this very intense interaction with this body of content. And when I'm through with that, I'll go through to some other content. But it is neat to be able to sort of intensely interact with the language, just the words, the sounds, and how it's written. And uh, I'll keep at it until I, I, I kind of understand 70, 80% of it, and then I'll go on to something else. So here you have it. I've rambled a bit. Uh, I just wanted to, I was so happy that my iMovie is working again. I thought it's late here, but before going to bed, uh, yeah, I watched the Vancouver Canucks beat the St. Louis Blues, had a nice dinner. And before going to bed, I would do a video since my iMovie is working again. And we'll see if I can get this loaded up on YouTube. Thank you for listening, and I'll be back. Tell me what you want me to talk about, too. Bye for now.